So good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm sure you're surprised, <laughs> surprised to see me here <laughs> in front, but uh, uh, as you may know, I want to say a few words about this, that uh, Pastor Nissa is on vacation, and I think she's going to be back like a week from tomorrow, I understand. And Pastor uh, Paul has got the COVID. And so I talked, he texted me last night, because he had already said word that I should ask if I could fill in, you know. And uh, he said, I'm, I've been really sick, he said. And so he's had a lot of fever. But I noticed he came this morning to open up the doors and show me I could get a microphone <laughs> someplace. And um, so he's improving, though. But uh, also, um, Christy is also is home with COVID now, too. So... Um, <clears throat> Otherwise, normally what I want, I want to say is good morning and welcome to the worship service and that we meet our Lord here together, each other, with our hearts and with our faith, where we can be genuine with God and we can be genuine with each other, knowing that God loves and forgives us beyond all comprehension. Those are words I like to use sometimes. <clears throat> now, um, uh, maybe I should mention that since I had such short notice, uh, I'm, I'm going to be not reading the gospel text here. I, I'm reading from a text. I chose a favorite text, you might say. And I might as well tell you, <laughs> tell you now with that short notice, I couldn't possibly, I had a funeral yesterday in Spring Grove, so I couldn't possibly uh, put together a sermon from scratch in, you know, 15 hours or whatever I didn't have. So um, I could mention that if there's anybody visiting here from St. Charles, <laughs> I'm, I know I preached much of the sermon, maybe half of the sermon, at, Saint, at Faith Lutheran in St. Charles about 11 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I really, because I really, you know, you can, I mean, you've got to get some sleep, you know, so. <clears throat> so, but, um, so, anyway, I, I let you know I'm going to be honest about that. <laughs> um, now, we have the, uh, on the order of service, and I hope you'll forgive me if I don't follow things too well sometimes here. I'm not used to this exactly. Um, the confession and forgiveness. And uh, let's see now, is that? Oh, it's on page 94 in, in the book of worship, yes. Page 94. Be nice if I had a book too. <laughs> Sorry, if you can laugh a little. Oh, thank you. That's okay. Laughter is awfully healthy too, you know. So I don't mind if you laugh at me a little. So please turn in your book of worship to page 94 in the front part of the book of worship. <clears throat> hmm. I think we stand, don't we? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> We're so glad we got one real, very uh, uh, polished uh, uh, pianist here this morning. Olivia, so <laughs> I'm glad we got someone you can count on. <laughs> Hopefully me too, though. <clears throat> okay, so we begin the confession forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, through us, and lead us, so that we may delight in you.
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join now in the gathering song, gathering hymn, that Olivia will lead us in. opening litany in your, in your bulletins. We are called to the love of God. We are called to the Lord our God. Sorry, I got this thing in the way here. We are, call, we are called to love the Lord our God. We are called to love the Lord our God. Come, let us love our God and share God's love in this time of worship. Now join in that hymn 167. Now that these... Join together now in the prayer of the day. O Lord God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing, Jesus Loves Me. And the children come forward children's message.
So, good morning, children. Thank you. Good to see you all here. It's so nice. We all love children. I think we all do. I know one person that doesn't. <laughs> He's not here, though. <coughs> in, fact, he, <coughs> in fact, he lives in Georgia. <coughs> but um, I want to let you notice that uh, you all look very healthy and um, look pretty happy. Are you, is that right? You're pretty, don't you feel, doesn't that feel good? You know, we, you're healthy because God made you that. He made you healthy and, and, and happy most of the time. Yeah. You got good parents, you know, and grandparents, and so that helps out a lot. So um, uh, we also come to church not just to talk about how healthy we are. Let's see, can you stand up, please? And can you go you like this with your arms? Let me see if I can feel your muscles. Whoa, they're good. <laughs> that's okay, well, that's great. And, and that's, that's just part of the example of when we're healthy. <clears throat> but, you know, we come here because we want to be healthy in, in, in faith, too. Right? Yeah, you're nodding your head. So in faith in Jesus, and, and the reason we, we can do that, we have to exercise that, too. So how do we, how do we become stronger uh, physically, you know, than our bodies? By how? Yeah, work out. Yeah, eat, eat healthy food. That's right. Very good. Work out. And so, do you? Any of you do? Do you do running a little bit whenever you feel like it, <laughs> or otherwise? Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> do running. I have one grandson. By the way, last August he ran 300 miles in one month. Yeah, so that's a lot of running, but. So, and yes, healthy for your body, you need that. But now for, for your faith, then, we come to church, and so what helps you uh, get strong in faith? Wow. What do you think? Yeah, reading the Bible? That's right. You're so smart. My gosh, you're smart. <laughs> That's good. And, uh, and anything else? Did you say anything else that helps? Yes? Oh, what? Coming to church? Yes, of course. Come to, absolutely. As you grow in faith, the more you hear stories about Jesus, the more you can grow in faith in, in Jesus and our God and the Holy Spirit too. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's, so that's, that's how it is. Um, so we need to come to church and we need to pray. We need to um, uh, read the Bible and stuff like that and listen to the Bible when it's being read and so on, because we want to grow stronger in faith as well as stronger physically, but keep on exercising too, like you do. Okay, I have just a little prayer, okay? Our gracious Heavenly Father, yeah, you can repeat, thank you. We ask your blessing upon us, your children, and we pray, help us to keep working our bodies, exercising, and help us to remember to hear the word of God and give thanks to God for his blessing and give thanks to God for your good parents. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you. I think we're now having some scripture reading, I think. Our first reading today is from the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, 
for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Here ends the first reading. Please read Psalm 22 with me responsively. But you, O Lord, be not far away. O my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the Lord. Save me from the lion's mouth. From the horns of wild bulls you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people in the midst of the assembly. I praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all, of, all you offspring of Israel. From you comes my praise in great assembly. I will perform my vows in sight of those who fear the Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow down before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus, that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question, what do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? He said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did they, anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ. There was this little boy in Sunday school who was drawing a picture and the teacher came and said, so Johnny, what are you drawing a picture of? He said, I'm drawing a picture of God. <laughs> and the teacher said, well, um, nobody knows what God looks like. And he said, well, when I finish my drawing, they will. The fact is, of course, when we look at Jesus in the New Testament, we discover who God is. We get a good picture of who God, the Heavenly Father, is. And in the Gospel reading today, we get another picture of God by what he proclaims. But now I want to give you some background. You see, the conservative religious 
leaders, primarily the Pharisees, were constantly in conflict with Jesus. Jesus' radical ways were a real threat to them, their traditions and their power and their control over society. Now, I want to hasten to add this, that I'm sure when they started out, they wanted to protect the faith. They wanted to protect the, the goodness of the, of the faith of the prophets and so on. And as God's chosen people to bring about the coming of the Messiah too. They wanted to protect that. But as many years passed, many, 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 many years, and many, many, many generations passed, they turned away from the good news and they became loaded down with extreme numbers of laws. Pushing people to live by the law. That's how you please God. Live by the law. Obey the laws. And as you may know, most religions in the world also believe that same thing. Whatever religion you think of, it's, we got to live by the law, obey the rules and regulations in order to make it to heaven so we can deserve it because oh, we're sinful people, but we want to deserve it. We want to earn it. We want to think we get credit for that. And so what had happened is they were thinking they were pleasing God probably, I'm sure, but they were actually leading people away from genuine faith in God leading people away from genuine trust in God and leading people away from genuine love for one's neighbor. And you remember how quickly Jesus was able to correct that, thinking, when he told the story about the good Samaritan, he was not a Jewish fellow, but he was a Samaritan. But he showed this mercy to this guy who has been wounded and injured on the road to, uh, to Samaria, or wherever it was, I forget. So... Um, you know, that they were being led away from genuine faith and love in God and to the neighbor. And some religious authorities in those days also said that Jesus must be crazy. He's something really weird, something happening with him. He's so disrespectful of our traditional ways. And they even told his mother and brothers, you know, please take him home. And let, him, let him rest up. There's something wrong with him. He's so erratically, so contrary to our laws and traditions. Take him home and rest up. You know, he's, he's not doing well. And then, of course, some of them just plain threatened him. And some of them even begged him to go somewhere else, not here. But I want to add that, you know, the crowds now, let's talk about the crowds now. This is apart from the Pharisees, of course. The crowds did recognize that when Jesus spoke, you know, he, things happened. Good things happened. He must be of God, they were thinking, and others pretty clearly thought that. He, he comes with a genuine love for us people. He must be a servant of God for sure because the forces of nature obey him and the diseases and the weaknesses of the people were healed, you know, at the touch of his hand. Well, anyhow, back to the, the text here. Even so, in our text, the whole series of conflicts with Jesus comes to a final showdown now in Jerusalem and all the representatives of the established powers and forces of society and disguised evil. It, it happens sometimes, you know. There's even underneath it, disguised evil. And they wanted to destroy Jesus. Throughout the week, they had given him their best shots, no doubt. And now the Pharisees come with his last question to test him and to trick him, of course, so they could build a case against him. So eventually, you get get rid of him. It's about their favorite subject, of course, that question. You know, the, you know, the laws. That's their favorite subject, of course. But we know that Jesus had been very cavalier about the laws. You know, he, it wasn't about the big deal for him at all. For him, the big deal for Jesus is a faith and love relationship with God, the Heavenly Father. And we know that now. Rabbis and other teachers of the law had already spent many hours debating this question and questions like it, which they now asked Jesus. And this is what they asked. Which is the first and greatest commandment of the law? And to answer this test, the possibilities were endless for Jesus because he could have selected from the grand list of 613 laws. Imagine. 
613 religious laws. I want to insert uh, a little something about where I stand when there's one issue called abortion nowadays. And I'm totally against abortion. I, I, I mean, I, I just can't stand the thought of that even, you know. I, I, there may be exceptions you have for the mother, I, absolutely, but, but basically against abortion. But I don't feel it's right for me or anyone to impose my religious belief on the whole country, every person in this country or even in the world. Because like they do that religious laws they have in the Middle East and see the women got to wear masks on their face, they got to follow behind the men, the women can't, girls can't go to school in some places and they, they can't drive. My niece was, worked at the American embassy there in uh, Saudi Arabia. She wasn't allowed to drive a car because she was a woman. All kinds of things like that. It's kind of like the Pharisees in a way if we get too much religious law stuff. I mean, that's just what I say and I don't know everything either about that. Yeah, just a few days ago, my wife and I were at uh, Walmart and we happened to uh, stop and talk to uh, these strangers because I tend to do that, you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you're going to be a missionary, that's the only way. Everyone's a stranger, you know, in Colombia and Africa, wherever you go. So. But anyhow, we were there and they were just lovely young ladies and um, uh, they, they recognized we were Christians and we, we, they were Muslims and we... We accepted each other, and they, they recognized, and they have respect for us, and it, it was really fine. And then I said, uh, after that, I said, can I give you a blessing? I know I don't know Somalian language. I don't know, I don't know the uh, Arabic either, but I do, uh, I could say a, a blessing probably in Greek. Oh, yeah, they'd like that. So I said, ho, the osteophyloxis say. And they said, oh, so what does that mean? I said, well, it means may God watch over you, or, or may Allah watch over you. They said, that's fine. And then, um, but I said, it doesn't mean that, you know, watching from a distance and see how you're doing. No, no, it's mainly, it's, it's kind of a, a, that Greek area is, is a caring love, like a mother, a hen watches her little chicks. You know, that's the kind of, um, kind of love that it is. And uh, so anyhow, um, now, of all those laws, there also were 365 thou shalt not laws. Can you imagine that? One for every day of the year. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And then there were about 248 thou shalt laws. Or Jesus could have picked one of the Ten Commandments, of course. But instead, what does Jesus do? He quotes, not his own words. No. As the first and greatest commandment, he quotes from what should have been known well to all of them way back in the book, old book of Deuteronomy. The sixth chapter, verse 5, this is what he quoted. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And then Jesus also added, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Everything else is just commentary. Of course we know, don't we, if we love our neighbors as ourselves, we will know how to treat them. It's all about love and faith that has been planted in you. It's there as a gift from God. So dear people, remember the Holy Spirit lives in you. He lives in me, I know, and he lives in you, not just around us, but he lives in you too. And that keeps bringing you back, you know, and renewing you in the faith. I've been amazed at how Martin Luther, a brilliant servant of the Lord, caught this message and wrote such insightful explanations in the small catechism. Clearly the work of the Holy Spirit through his servant Luther. He teaches we should fear and love God. And of course, that fear, I don't know why he used that word, but it's just trying to cover a whole lot of stuff, I think. But to me, it's not, it's not, not like fear and scared and afraid and trembling and oh, no, 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 not that thing at all. It's about having ultimate respect for God. Ultimate respect for God. You should have ultimate respect for God and love. So that you will, of course, what? Do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not steal, and do not commit you know, things like that, and profane his name, and whatever. Now, what is happening in our society today is a big question. What is happening that we have so many mass shootings in our day? Just, to me, totally, totally disgusting. What has happened to this year? Ultimate respect and, and love to God and to our neighbors. I know when we see the, uh, the 
the shooting says it bothered me a lot. And when they showed the pictures on the time of all those kids, I couldn't help but cry a little too. And I think Jesus does. It's so sad. Well, it's a very clear message to all people, though, not just to Christians and Jews and Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists. We are all called to love God and to love all people, especially the children, especially the poor and the immigrants. We've always been that in our country, I think. And the refugees and the addicted people and the hungry and the thirsty and the ill and so on. And I like these beautiful words that included here now that comes so nice from Jesus. He says in another place, inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. Now that's beautiful. I'm going to play a two-minute song here by John Yulvesacker, who is a classmate of mine at Luther Seminary, and he wrote lots of hymns. And uh, this reminds us that, you know, what that God it says so beautifully. He sings that it's not God that depends on us because what hands does he have? Or what feet does he have? What voice does he have? What ears does he hear? The cries of the, of the needy people. It's us. Uh, Max Lucado tells the story of a man who had been a uh, closet slob. <laughs> he just couldn't comprehend the logic of neatness. Why make a bed back up again? You're going to go back and sleep in it a few hours anyhow. Why put the cap on a toothpaste and it's just do the same old thing and on and on. The man even admitted that of being a compulsively messy person. Then, lo and behold... He got married, oh, Megan back there. He got married one day. We love you. you know. He got married, and his wife was patient and loving. <laughs> and she also said she didn't mind his habits. She didn't mind his habits as long as he didn't mind sleeping in the mess on the floor. <laughs> well, since he did mind, he began to change. In fact, he even rolled in a 12-step program for slobs. And by the time his in-laws came to visit, uh, he, he was a new man. But then came the moment of truth. His wife went out of town for a week. And at first he reverted to the old man, the old nature again. But something strange happened. He saw the dirty dishes, the towels laying all over the bathroom floor, and clothes laying here and there in the house. And he thought of his wife's love. So what happened? Simple. He cleaned it up. You see, he had been exposed to a higher standard of living. Really, he had been exposed to the standard of love. And that's the point I want to make with you this morning. We have been exposed to the standard of love. It's what Jesus does with us. 
We see that in the words of Jesus all over the scriptures. So keep loving those in need we call our neighbors. It's an expression not just to them of love, but expression to God, to our loving God, Lord Jesus. And it won't be a perfect love, but it can be a, a, a genuine love because we have been given that. And it can be a warm love that welcomes and accepts and gives, gives hope, gives the gospel good news, gives encouragement, and yes, gives healing. It is Jesus and the Holy Spirit that works with us and through us. So dear people, I remind you, God loves you. He really does. And we know that in Jesus. It's what Jesus does with us. Amen. Sorry. I believe what I preach, you know. <laughs> We're now join in singing hymn number Rise, Shine, You People, 665. now have the prayers of the church, I think. Thank you, Shelley. There's a note on pastor's desk. I think he'd like you to include that. I will. <clears throat> United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, you hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not hurt the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth observance, guide us continually toward the end of oppression and racism in all its forms, being true freedom Bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. Lord, in your mercy. Healing Lord, you hear the cries of those who suffer. 
Come to the aid of all who are homeless, addicted, hungry, and sick. Bring, bring peace and wholeness to communities devastated by gun violence and those nations around the world torn apart by war. Today, close to home, we pray an extra measure of healing upon Craig Bren, Arlene Amundsen, Rick Nelson, Jerry Spellog, LaVon Hansen, Erica Kohlmeyer, Jeff Stevas, Paul's little, Pastor Paul's little brother David as he struggles with cancer, and the family of Wes Allen as they grieve his passing. Also loved ones in care centers and those we name silently in our hearts in this moment of silence. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, you hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. Thank you for all those who, have, who are or have been father figures to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers to and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. I neglected at the very beginning to say Happy Father's Day. It was in my notes, but you know, I don't always read them in time. So, and of course, what a blessing it is if you have, have now or have had good fathers. What a tremendous blessing that is. Tremendous. And a good mother's. Wow. I know that, and you know it too. Uh, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes. Would you stand now, please, and share the peace with one another? May be seated, and we will now receive the offerings. I think the uh, the uh, I think the announce. I'd like you to read the announcements yourself, please. Uh, and bear in mind, of course, the, uh, the upcoming funeral and uh, the grief of the family. Wes Allen, who's a dear member of our congregation, who had, uh, did, gave a lot of leadership to the Lutheran Supper, I know. So, but uh, we'll now receive the offerings.
And we join now in singing the uh, hymn 194, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we present these gifts as a token of presenting ourselves to you, our Lord. And we pray use them and us to further your call to discipleship and the sharing of your grace to all people. In Jesus' name, amen. A great thanksgiving now in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Into your, lift up your heart. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should give thanks to God in all things. Join now in singing that one verse of 413. Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to all his disciples to say, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant, not the old covenant from the Old Testament. This is now the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We, uh, as the bread is distributed, there is also the gluten-free for those who need that. So you'll ask for that. And in the, uh, the juices, the light color is the grape juice, and the purple is the, the wine. Uh, and uh, all are welcome to come, may be seated now. And then we have the uh, helpers. up to the railing, please. The body of Christ. 
praise given for you. Body of praise given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Excuse me. Sorry, sorry. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. God bless you, young fellow. Jesus loves you and forgives you always, okay? Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you, bro. Body of Christ can be your body. Body of Christ given for you, Eleanor. The body of Christ given for you, then Ellie. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Body of Christ given for you, Elsie. Body of Christ given for you, Jerry. Body of Christ given for you, Sue. Body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Bless you. Love you and smiles with it, Jesus. God forgives you always and loves you always. God loves you always too and forgives you, yes. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. We give each other. <coughs> the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. I'm sorry. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
you may stand, please. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which he gave and shed for you on that cross at Calvary about 2,000 years ago, and as he comes again this morning beneath those fred forms of bread and wine, may he strengthen and preserve you in his grace and your faith unto life everlasting. God's peace be with you. Amen. And then the benediction from the Old Testament. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The look, Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is 879 verses 1 and 4. And thank you, Olivia. Go in peace, serve the Lord.